Welcome in to Locked On Knicks. And the Knicks, as usual, can't make it easy on draft night. <laughs> Lots of trades, but Pacom.ea is a Nick, as far as we know, till tomorrow. Who knows? Who's to say? We'll get into it right now on Locked On Knicks. You are Locked On Knicks, your daily New York Knicks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome in to Locked On Knicks. We want to thank you guys for making Locked On Knicks first listen today and every day, whether you're checking us out on your favorite podcast platform or taking in the sights and sounds on YouTube. We appreciate you making us a part of your daily routine. Make sure you hit that auto-download function on your favorite podcast app or the notification bell on YouTube so you never miss an episode because this is like our eighth episode this week already or something, and it's only Wednesday. It's crazy. There's a lot of stuff going on with the Knicks right now. Make sure you never miss an episode. I'm Alex Wolf. I'm editor-in-chief of the Strickland, which you can find at thestrick.land. Sitting right next to me, in person for once, in Barclays Center. What a, little, world. a little quieter than our episode we recorded earlier, <laughs> now that it's the end of the draft, is Gavin Shaw, your favorite play-by-play broadcaster's favorite play-by-play broadcaster. And we just got done watching the New York Knicks get all confusing with it again, like they do at the draft every year. Uh, Gavin, uh, we we tried to do this the spoiler-free method. We were not on our phones. Yeah. We were trying to be like, let's just live in the moment. We're up here. We had cool seats. You know, the, the, maybe I'll put a picture of it in the podcast on YouTube. Like, we got, pretty, we got hooked up pretty good. It was kind of cool. And got to see all this in person. And uh, we were trying to be like, let's live in the moment. And then it was just like, Keyshawn George, that's like the one guy we didn't do homework on. And then it's like, oh, never mind. He's gone. Okay. And then, oh, pack home daddy A, like we only did a little bit of homework on him. And then it's like, well, okay, yeah, but now it seems like they might draft and stash him. It seems like this whole night was basically motivated by what we were talking about with the Mikhail Bridges trade, which is that the Knicks are trying to avoid some pretty severe financial peril and probably trying to make whatever Hail Marys they can to retain Isaiah Hartenstein right now and save as much money off the cap as they can. If there's one thing I've learned in, in five years of covering Knicks drafts, you never get what you want going in, you get what you need. And, and apparently that's what happened today for the Knicks. Bacom Dottie, I, th- I think we'd be lying, Alex, if either of us said we were experts on him. We will certainly in the coming days have multiple people on who are experts on Pacom Dottie. Um, if you're out there, the, the world's leader in Pacom Dottie knowledge, hit us up. We want you on the podcast. Uh, but Everything I've read is positive. The consensus is he was one of the great sleepers of this draft. Watching a little bit of film on him tonight, excellent backdoor cutter. Had had a pretty successful performance against the number one pick in this draft, uh, Richarche, whose, whose name I just butchered, um, is a really good shooter. Like the shot is clean. The percentages were not fantastic at this point. Um, put up six points, six and a half points, two rebounds a game, fifty percent from the field. 36% from three, 74% from the foul line. But again, we're talking about a teenager playing professional ball. Same club Killian Hayes came out of. Maybe that doesn't give anyone at home the warm fuzzies. But just watching him, like, th- there's a lot of stuff for the Knicks to like. Six foot eight, really skillful. Again, willing to move off the ball, effective moving off the ball. Profiles as someone who could be a pretty good defender um, at the next level, like on the catch, like is a really good last step going to the rim. And, and seems like everyone in draft Twitter liked the pick. So who, who am I to disagree with the experts? Yeah, I mean, uh, our own James Barlow of Locked on NBA Big Board. Uh, if you check out our YouTube channel, I believe his take on on uh, Dottie was pa- posted as a short. And he seems over the moon with him. He called him potentially one of the biggest sleepers in the whole draft. So that. That sounds great. I mean, there's a lot of things to like, I guess, about the pick. Um, in theory, it seems like the kid kind of is a ball of clay right now. So I, I don't totally hate the idea of potentially keeping him overseas for a little bit. Uh, I guess we're still sort of holding out hope that maybe Rokas Jokobitis comes over this year, uh, who the Knicks also kind of did a similar maneuver with uh, in 2021 when they drafted him and still have not brought him over. So maybe this is just the latest in a long line of, of Knicks draft and stashers that they have here. Uh, or maybe they're just trying to draft a guy and have his rights and have, you know, Dottie if he has a really good season this year, to have him as a potential trade chip if they want to make some other move at some point down the line. Uh, who's to say? I mean, it, you would think if that was their motivation with these sort of picks, though, they probably would have traded Rokas by now because he's won the Rising Star Award and all these other prestigious accolades since being drafted by the Knicks, and nothing's happened there yet. So, I don't know. It's uh, It was an intriguing 
an intriguing decision there. And then, you know, we can get into the finer details of what picks they were later on. But the, you know, the trade with the Thunder then, you know, initially the trade was Washington gives the Knicks 26 and 51 for 24 for Keyshawn George. And then we thought the Knicks made the selection with 26. And we we're like, who is that guy? Uh, Dylan. I forget his Dylan last Jones, name. Dylan right? Jones. Dylan yeah. Jones, I think, yeah. Uh, and we were like, who oh, is this dude? We didn't do any research on him. And then realized that he was, in fact, not going to be on the Knicks either. Um, so, uh, you know, they traded him uh, to the Thunder in exchange for five future. Yeah, you want, you, want, you want me to read these out? 2027 sure. Wolves, 2027 second most favorable of four teams, OKC, Houston, Miami, Indiana. And last and finally, a, a 2027 most favorable of OKC, Miami, Indiana. I skipped two in there. They have the 2025 most favorable of the Celtics and the Grizzlies and the 2026 Warriors. Um, we, we've seen the Knicks and, and Brock Aller like, use second-round picks really well in terms of their ability to get off money. And, and just by not making the second pick after initially moving from 24 to 26 in a in a trade with the Wizards, they picked up another second round pick. So six second round picks added on the night if you're doing the math. And, and we've seen the Knicks like use them kind of as loose change, right? To maneuver mm-hmm. around in the draft, to get off of money. They've already created $3 million. Um, I don't think that is, is going to, I, I, I know that's, or I'm, you know, I'm not going to say I know anything with the cap right now, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say strongly like that doesn't change the Isaiah Hartenstein equation. But if they lose Hartenstein, which maybe is looking like more and more of an inevitability, possibly changes um, the math in terms of like what range they could go to get a, another backup center for Mitchell Robinson. Here's a here's a tinfoil hat theory and maybe someone smarter than me with the cap, which I thought I was good at the cap until the last like three days. And now I don't know what's going on. I don't know which way is up anymore. But maybe as they're still trying to find ways to expand this, uh, this Mikhail Bridges trade and find their way to send out a little bit more salary, to make this thing so that they can have the second apron as their hard cap this year, which they need to send out a little more salary to do. Perhaps they picked up all these extra second round picks to attach to like Jericho Sims mm. or uh, uh, Daquan Jeffries or someone like that to get that deal done. So I don't know if that's I, I could see some being in, in that Nets trade to, yeah. to push yeah. them to that second apron, which we, yeah. we established that you'd have to include Jeffries, you'd have to include Diakete. And, and the Nets aren't, even, even though we're in Barclays Center and we haven't gotten to a fight with anyone, the Nets are not doing the Knicks any favors. Um, so that, that might be what gets that done. Maybe. And if that's it, we'll that's see. it. Yeah. So now I guess, uh, Gavin, we can just take a moment and uh, uh, come back and then get into – who's still left because it seems like maybe the Knicks will use this pick 38 tomorrow. Maybe they want to bring in one rookie on a second round contract that they have a little more con- uh, control over and then possibly a pick 51. But I don't even know if we could go that deep into the draft because we don't know that much about that deep in the draft because we weren't looking at it the whole cycle. But uh, let's take a second and then come back and just give a few of the names that the Knicks might potentially look at in the second round tomorrow. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And I'll tell you what, you know, the Mets. Up and down season so far, but I love going to a Mets game just to go eat the food, right? But that's expensive, so why not go with game time and then you can get a better deal? That's because they have flash deals that let you save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event and zone deals, which lets you save even more when you choose a section and let game time choose the seats. Give you a little tip. If you go to a Mets game, try to find a seat sort of near the Shea Bridge because that's where all the best food is. So, you know, take that and then maybe go try to find a zone deal. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And today's show is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. 
Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, and we're back to continue going through this weird first night of the draft for the Knicks where they draft a player that maybe won't even play for them this year. Uh, but, you know, that's that's the Knicks' Leon Rose experience on draft night and the Brock Aller experience trying to circumvent the cap and all this other stuff. But, Gavin, there was a few names that were still left on the board, a couple that we know at least have a little bit of interest from the Knicks that could be pretty intriguing going into round two and perhaps now equipped with pick 38 and 51, maybe – they look to get active early and move up to like pick 31, 32, 33, something like that. If one of these guys makes it in the first few picks tomorrow. Yeah. So a few, a few of the names we've, we've talked about a bunch already. Uh, Tyler Kolek is someone last second, unless I'm losing my mind. Like he, he didn't go like someone who's ready. Like I, I think I'm less incentivized by him just because you have Rogus Jokobitis as an option, but um, Kolek, an exceptional shooter, best passer in college basketball over the past two years. Uh, Jonathan Mobo is someone mm -hmm. you and I were talking about. I'll, I'll leave it to you. You were really into him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jonathan Mobo seems really intriguing. Like, he's a big, uh, played for a really small school, but put up some really bonkers numbers. Like, has a pretty decent physical profile. You know, it's just, he. it's, it's hard to judge him because he played for San Francisco. Yeah, which, he's, he's Draymondy, though. He's like 6'6", yeah. six, six, physical, yep. athletic. Yeah, go on. It, like, fits the sort of things that the Knicks would value. You know, good rebounder. Seems good on defense, things like that. So, you know, I guess we'll see if he ends up being uh, the guy that the Knicks want to go with. I, my website, the Strickland, did get a scoop that the Knicks did have him in for two workouts. So maybe this is a guy that that they're looking to, you know, get with that 38th pick or potentially move up for. Um, Kyle Filipowski, maybe that's the biggest exactly name. Exactly who I was yeah, going to yeah, say. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's like, that's the guy to me that I'm like, if they move up and get him, maybe just further indication that maybe they're not confident about the Hardenstein situation because. I don't know if he's perfectly ready to come in year one and contribute, but I think that you could be like, he could get spot minutes. You re-sign Precious for like half of what Hartenstein gets to fill out your roster. And then, you know, you have Mitchell Robinson as your starter again, and he's the guy you lean on. But, you know, Filipowski, like at least on paper and looking at his tape a little bit, looks like the sort of guy that maybe you can see the outlines of like in a couple years, maybe he starts to turn into what Hartenstein is now. Uh, but, you know, I, I think he would be a bit of a project. So I, I don't know that he would be, like, ready to be a playoff contributor year one or something, but certainly a worthwhile investment if the Knicks find themselves without their starting center from last year just thanks to cap hell. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. We, we've, we talked all throughout this draft cycle about the Knicks going and getting a curveball at the center spot. Maybe that comes in the form of – I saw Jeremy Cohen mention this on the Knicks Film School pod and, like, a, a double sign-in trade – or a single sign-in trade and the Knicks get Wendell Carter back from the Magic. Like, he's someone who filled that role. But any kind of stretch big I, I think would be nice just to have that option. And even if Filipowski doesn't really play a role, like if this is a redshirt year for him, I don't think that's a big problem. But he brings that size to the table as, as a seven-footer or near seven-footer, like, talented shooter, Prez, who, who I trust pretty much more than – and anyone this stuff came on the show and said he is a better shooter than his numbers indicate. Someone who has a post game, can dribble, can pass, brought a lot more intensity this year. I'm a big fan of his game. I'm surprised he slipped out of the first round entirely after at points in this draft cycle, like a lot of people seeing him as a lottery pick. Um, so he's pretty interesting. Johnny Furphy, high upside kid out of Kansas, big time, 6'7", athletic shooter. Uh, Adam Bona is is, um, is interesting in that he's going to be a second round pick, but there are, there are categories where you could rate him like the best of this draft. Like he is athletic. He is strong. Wrong. like he's kind of the ultimate like this sounds like an insult but you get this guy in the second round it's great like garbage man big like very similar to Kevon Looney out of UCLA um, almost a decade ago at this point like there are there are some real names for the Knicks I'm um, Alex I'll leave the last one to you Tyler Smith I know someone we both got excited about talking to Prez yeah I mean Tyler Smith seems like context is really important with him because some people if you listen to their draft takes on him are like all he can do is shoot yeah. at like roughly 6'10", you know, and it's like he doesn't do any of the, the other things you want out of a big. He doesn't really defend that well, not a great rebounder. Certainly the at the rim numbers were pretty disgusting. I think he shot like 30% at the rim or something like that. But Prez provided some pretty useful context on him, I feel like, when we talked to him. And it was like he was playing on one of the worst space teams that he possibly could have been on yeah. in the G League Elite. Like, there's sort of a reason why that program is getting shut down. It's not just that college players can get paid now. It's also partly that, like, 
it, it's just been kind of a mess. Like some of the guys that come through that program, it seems like they play glorified pickup ball almost. And I, I, I feel like Tyler Smith is maybe one of the guys that uh, suffered from that a bit. But, I mean, I was saying to you when, when we were thinking about if he might possibly be the pick at, at 24 or 25 and then 25 or 26 that, you know, hey, this guy, like, has the skill that everybody looks for in a big yeah. in shooting and is, like, the most elusive skill for big men. Right. So he's already got that nailed down. So then, you know, if all you have to do is teach him to be an average defender, let his body fill out. And he's him, a big-time athlete, too, yeah. like, at least vertically. Yeah, yeah, like, let him learn how to rebound, you know, see if he can learn to defend in space a little bit and stuff like that. And he's young, so I, maybe that's a guy that you take the upside swing on and stash him in Westchester for most of the year and in a more – structured G League program yeah. to see how that goes. But uh, definitely a guy worth looking at, too. So uh, the Knicks are not without options in the second round. After today, of course, I worry, are they even going to take advantage of those options because they skipped on some guys? I mean, maybe we could just real quick just say, just briefly, who is the guy that you were, like, most – disappointed that they didn't take ultimately today yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna leave uh there, there was one we were we were both into i'll, I'll leave to you but uh yeah. baylor shireman of course he ended up on the celtics uh, i think he's an upgrade over sam hauser to them i i just i really liked his passing and his quick decision making the knicks are just with, with all the nova guys they're building a team full of quick decision makers it, it's the type of basketball i love I, i'm that guy who like once once a year pulls up like all those 2013 14 spurs videos and sits down for two hours and just goes through all the highlights like i think shireman really plays that type of game and and it's just someone who feels playoff ready to me like I'm, I'm a believer in his defense I'm a believer in his shooting and, and I just I think his IQ and his his processing speed would have been a really clean fit and he's a little bit Boyani so with the Knicks moving off of Boyan obviously with good reason would have been nice to replace that with someone who obviously was not going to be that good right away but certainly brought some stuff to the table and I, I think still have room to grow but you, you you wanted them to take more of kind of an upside swing yeah and I think Isaiah Collier would have been the guy that I would have been like hey go for it I mean this was like a top high school recruit when ends up going all the way towards the end of the first round had the loudest cheering section in the yeah. freaking draft dude like the room was like mostly cleared out by the time that he got called and all of a sudden it just erupts i'm like man he yeah. had his whole family here it was I, cool they were yeah. right behind us yeah. I mean, they were like right behind us that was loud it kind of almost startled me a little bit but i mean you know he's big guard you know was one of the top guys in his class and then the situation at usc just wasn't great this past year and it seemed like that sort of led to him having a down year um but only down in, in by some metrics, you know what I mean? It's like his numbers weren't terrible. You know, he, he wasn't bad per se, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I think he would have been worth the swing. But it's clear that the Knicks, I think at this point, just didn't want to commit the money to the first-round picks at this yeah. point. And so if that was always going to be the case, if he didn't make it to the second round, he didn't make it. Maybe if he made it to pick 31, the Knicks would have been aggressive to get pick 31 and take him and have a more controlled scenario with his contract where they could – negotiate a little more or whatever but uh because a kid like that you figure is like i don't think that he's going to want to get stashed overseas or something so he would have been like you know he and his agent probably been like whatever we're going to sign a shorter term deal for the bare minimum i guess but you know like we want playing time and whatever this year so at least then we can maybe cash out and restrict a free agency in two years or something right um so i don't know i it's an interesting scenario that we'll never actually see play out because obviously he didn't make it to the second round so is what it is but yeah collier was definitely the guy and then also i guess honorary mention between the two of us to ryan dunn who had easily the most smoke of any player and then there was some smoke coming out that like oh he might not even make it to the Knicks because some team allegedly kind of liked him like late teens early 20s Mm. and i was seeing something about that and then he makes it past the Knicks as well and ultimately doesn't get taken by the Knicks, even though there was tons of smoke saying, like, they would go for him. But, you know, maybe now that you have Mikhail Bridges, it's like, well, why the hell do we need the version that can't the, shoot anymore? All three of the Dunn, Mikhail, and OG together. Could have been the ultimate just, stopper lineup. Yeah, allow, nine, nine, allow eight points a game. Yeah. Would have been amazing. Yeah. And, and score seven some yeah. nights. <laughs> sure, <laughs> you <know>? yeah. That, that's, <laughs> look, that's baseball. <laughs> that's there you baseball. go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, all right, well. I think that's about all we got to say because uh, we got to get someone on that knows a little more about PacHome.ca, <laughs> to be completely honest. Uh, but we'll, of course, have your second-round recap tomorrow as well, whatever the Knicks end up doing, and then more uh, follow-ups and, of course, free agency coming up and all kinds of good stuff. So until uh, next time, thank you all for listening, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace out.